we are now joined by Mr. DG Shah, who's Secretary General at Indian Pharmaceutical Alliance, who's joining us on the phone line from Ahmedabad. Let's get a sense of as to what's really happening in the sector right now. Uh, Mr. Shah, thank you very much for joining us here on NDTV Profit. It's the first time that we are talking, uh, the, you know, uh, about what's really happening in the pharma sector uh, with you on NDTV Profit. Uh, can you give us a sense about the pharma sector? We've seen these dark clouds of US FDA observations. They've now been hovering around for quite some time. What's your assessment? What's really the reason and what's happening in the sector? Well, over the last 12 months, the industry has been seized of, uh, the leading companies are seized of this uh, concern, which has been expressed by US FDA. And we have been having periodic dialogue with uh, US FDA in the USA. Uh, and addressing and understanding, first understanding and addressing the concerns raised by them. Uh, we have engaged uh, some of the best experts in the world and the process has already been initiated. It would take us, see there are primarily three issues. One is a data reliability issue. Uh, second is a, uh, the best practices. And third is a culture issue. Now, see, data reliability and uh, best practices uh, is relatively easy to address uh, compared to the culture issue. And this requires a consistent effort. Uh, we have targeted that in uh, two to three years' time, we should be able to address most of these issues. But this does not mean to say that during this period, other companies may not get such uh, uh, warning letters or import alerts. But we believe that we have identified the issues and the solution. Now it's a matter of time uh, for us to implement this. All right. So that's a uh, that's a welcome move. I mean, you know, the way you're saying that the industry has identified, of course, the issues and identification recognition of an issue is really important. And then you can uh, look out for some sort of a solution. But how come we've seen a sudden spike in observations that have come in from the US FDA to the entire almost entire Indian pharma sector? What has really changed, say, in the last one year, one, one and a half year or so that the number of observations that we've got, it's it's been way too much. Well, uh, at least there are three factors. One, the number of facilities which uh, uh, are in India has gone up significantly. Uh, number two, with the global expansion of facilities which FDA has to inspect, that has gone up and uh, the growth of inspectors, uh, any organization like uh, pharma companies which have grown uh, at a rapid pace, uh, the training, skilling of the inspectors has not kept the same pace. And as a result, there is an element of subjectivity has crept in, which uh, FDA has also recognized. And uh, on its part, FDA is addressing those issues. And thirdly, the uh, standards uh, and the interpretation of uh, the standards has changed. So all these three factors combined have led to, uh, not only in India, I mean, uh, if we go through the detailed analysis of uh, uh, warning letters uh, all over the world, uh, and this is no excuse for Indian companies. Uh, I'm not saying it as an excuse, but I'm only putting the issue in perspective uh, that uh, this is not just in India, it has happened all over the world. And uh, we need to meet uh, whatever is the expectation of US FDA and restore confidence in the FDA that the senior management, the top management of the companies are concerned and committed to meet the FDA requirement. And this message we have been able to communicate to FDA that uh, we are serious.
Right. So, Mr. Shah, can we expect, as you're saying, that you know the issues will be addressed by the companies here, as senior managements of these companies are aware of the entire situation? Then, can we say that we may see a lot of uh, investment really being taking place in this year into skilling and training, uh, so that you know right standards are maintained as the kind of expansion that we've seen in terms of number of facilities, more and more investment uh, in skilling and training going forward coming in. Uh, not only this year, but this has already begun uh, a year ago. We started working on this. I'm in a position to talk today because of last one year uh, we've been working on this. And companies have made significant investment, uh, not only on skilling and training people at all levels, but also developing the best uh, possible guidelines which are vetted by the global experts by the regulator, and these are being implemented. And in terms of uh, equipment and uh, hardware, also companies are making significant investments because there are some things which are could be easily done by ensuring that uh, uh, audit trail cannot be wiped out. So that uh, even if a junior officer inadvertently uh, should not be able to do that, and we don't face... Uh, this sort of issues from the FDA. So several elections have been initiated and that's why I'm in a position to say today that uh, you would see it and besides the US FDA wants us to monitor and measure the change that is taking place. So we, we are doing that. Right. So company industry is really taking a lot of measures to improve things on that front. Uh, sir, we've also seen this government's decision which had come in to ban about 344 fixed drug combinations and uh, many companies have managed to get an interim relief. What's uh, the update on that front? How is the industry really now going to tackle that particular issue? Because there are also now news reports floating that apart from these 324, about 400 more are expected to get banned in the similar order. Similar fashion? I will first register my objection to the word manage to get stay. No, that's not. That's not manage to get stay. Uh, this is a legitimate the due process of law was not followed. Industry is willing to work with the government and we are not just after profit. The patient safety and well-being is the first and the most important criteria for us. And if we do not meet that, the patients won't have faith in us. Unfortunately, what has happened, that uh, terms of reference of the committee and the data provided to the committee uh, have been shrouded in secrecy. Uh, there has not been any transparency. Uh, the companies were not given an opportunity to present their case. And this was a knee-jerk reaction that suddenly one fine evening, not even morning, one fine evening, uh, CDSCO came up with a 344 notifications banning drugs. Now, these are drugs which are approved by DCGA himself. These are not the state uh, uh, F, uh, FDAs which had approved this. Now, in terms of reference to the committee was uh, that only which were approved by state were to be examined. Now, it's like saying that a student who got a degree from a university, after 10 years, university tells him that, no, no, we granted the degree wrongly, we are withdrawing the degree. Now, if you even want to do that, the student would like to understand uh, why, what, what was when you issued me the degree, and what are you doing now? Right. Now, this is precisely our dialogue with the government now. But look, tell us which, if there are three ingredients in a drug, which one is making it irrational? Hmm. And if for 25 years these drugs have, you have allowed us to sell these drugs, uh, then aren't you responsible for compromising patient safety if you say that, say that this were a burn? Right. So, so there, is, there is a lot more to it and the court is not going to be the solution. Hmm, hmm. Ultimately, 
the court will tell us that okay, go back and sit down with the drug regulator hmm. and hmm. understand and will tell drug regulator that listen to the company what they have to say. Right. And this is what we are trying to work at. Okay. So what is going to be the next step that we are likely to see now in this particular case? Very briefly. For me to predict what government will do will not be appropriate and I am not in a, in a position but we are working to initiate a dialogue with the government Okay. Uh, that look, can we, I mean, an industry and its regulator cannot be at longer age. They need to work together to achieve the desired result. And okay. without compromising patient safety. So can we do that? Okay. And this is what uh, we are trying to do. You are seeking to and get it. And I am hopeful that we would succeed in, in, in initiating this dialogue.